Thank you for tuning in. This video is on God's unwarranted supernatural intervention. Sometimes people like myself who have studied principles of faith so heavily, we can get so focused on that that we actually, it becomes a form of doubt and unbelief. It can even lead to fear and things like that. Uh, we become so focused on our responsibility to act in faith that we get to the point where it's kind of like um, just us against the devil and we've got to be acting, operating in faith or we're going to lose not knowing that God does things supernaturally on our behalf. Um, I can remember, and it was one of his, probably the last videos that he did before he passed away, John Paul Jackson was speaking about how God had revealed many times where he'd saved his life. A few of those times was where his car wouldn't start or it ran out of gas and it saved him from getting into a serious accident. At one point, um, it prevented him, from, uh, he was going to get robbed, beaten up, and, and possibly killed. God showed him. And then afterwards, God told him that there was nothing special about him. He did that for all of his children. Um, and God uh, supernaturally revealed to me a gang attack that was coming against me not too long ago. But a lot of, I've also realized a lot of other minor ways that he uh, intercedes. Um, apart from me operating in faith or doing anything to deserve it or earn it, however you want to word that. But I can remember in times past when I was first coming back to God and I was still in quite a bit of bondage sometimes I would be having communications with people and I would misunderstand something that they were saying and this is kind of an odd way of him intervening maybe or a very minor way but it's still pretty supernatural and amazing I would get really mad about what I perceived was going on so I typed out an angry email that I was going to get ready to shoot and I saw this happen probably uh, three or four different times. I was just getting ready to hit the send button and all of a sudden my computer shuts down all the way. Um, last night I took my dog up to uh, the convenience store, tied him up outside at a pole like I do a lot of times, go in there um, to get some stuff that I wanted to get. And I was at the checkout stand, the gal was just ringing me up, I was getting ready to swipe my card and I heard some ma crazy maniac yelling at my dog and you could just tell the guy was absolutely insane and I wasn't going to let him hurt my dog so I uh, stopped what I was doing r right then and, and went out the door to see what was going on and to make a long story short I'm sure the guy was probably both on uh, doped up and on alcohol drunk he was there were some people who were, uh, I just was kind of standing there. I knew better to try it than to have a conversation with somebody who was as sane as this guy was. He was threatening everybody, cursing. He's just um, completely under the influence of the devil. And he was threatening people uh, who were around and so forth. But I felt obligated to stay there because I could. I wanted to get back in there so I could check out. There's a line waiting behind me. And I'm outside dealing with this situation. Make a long story short, lady inside the store comes out and tells the guy to go. And I go in, pay for my stuff, and I come out, and then I see what looks like his truck parked next door. So I, the first thing that comes to mind, and other people have that same thought, was that he's waiting over there for me. And, uh, you know, my sense was I probably got nothing to worry about, but he might be have a gun in his car and that might be him over there. So I said, well, I'm going to call uh, 911 just to be safe. And my phone just wouldn't work. It just, uh, I couldn't dial 911. It was doing weird stuff. And I'm kind of frustrated. I finally get it uh, to work so that I can dial 911. And then when I do uh, send the call, I get like a fax number or something. It was, and it was 911 that I dialed. So um, and I you know, said, okay, no big deal. My sense was I really had nothing to worry about anyway. And although this guy was uh, a raging lunatic for sure, and there's no telling what he'd be capable of. But um, 
So, uh, you know, I put my phone back in my pocket and I uh, walk on home. And sure enough, it turns out that that truck there wasn't even him. So had I called the police at a minimum, um, it probably would have made me look stupid, wasted a lot of time, both theirs and mine. But God had supernaturally prevented it. Um, I've seen him, and I see this happening in the lives of people all around me. So we should take heart on that. It is important to operate and know how to operate in principles of faith. Uh, there's incredible power in that. We should be operating in the things spoken of in Mark chapter 16 about laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. Um, we should know how to pray prayers of faith that, that will produce miracles in every area. But uh, we also need to understand it's not solely dependent on our ability uh, to do that because God does um, provide us with supernatural protection. I heard someone saying he's somebody had a life after death experience and he's a pastor. Uh, and he said that um, in his journey, um, God showed him that believers, and I think this is also scriptural, have guardian angels. So, yeah, there's a war. It seems like we're vastly outnumbered with the amount of demonic activity there is out there. And I think um, in numbers wise, there's more demons than there are human beings, but we also have God's supernatural uh, protection. And that's important with the things that are coming in the future, uh, the difficulties. Things will get worse, but um, God's going to provide supernatural provision for his people, and he's also going to operate in new ways and supernaturally through his people for the benefit of those that are around. Thank you for tuning in. And God bless you.